Hi, my name is Jill Forcade. I was 52 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I had a double mastectomy with reconstruction. I did have several revision surgeries and chemotherapy. My healthcare team consisted of Dr. Rhett Sassard, Dr. Kobehi, and Dr. Jules Walters, and also EJ Oncology. With this team of doctors and staff, they successfully made me feel whole again. And to my sister Mona, you were with me throughout this journey, from the moment that we heard the word cancer, throughout many surgical appointments, doctor's appointments, on endless hours of chemo, and just always being there for me. I love you. And to the rest of my family and friends, you all were always there for me through everything. And you all made this journey a winning one. Hey, I'm Jill's oldest sister, much older, but when Jill was first diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, you could have knocked me over with a feather. But as a family and as um, her oldest sister and who I, um, she's part of meaning so much to my life and all our lives, we went through this together and with a great team of doctors and a great team of family, we got through it. And Jill started off a very strong and wonderful person. And she came out even stronger. And she's been going on to help other people through this. And I'm so proud of her. And the way she's handled all this has un been unbelievable. And we love her so much. And we're so glad that she got through all this. And we knew she would. And she has very done, done a great job. And this is my story. Football is my family religion, and Saturday is our day of worship. Raised in Metairie, Louisiana, by an Auburn Tiger mom and a loyal Roll Tide dad, they taught us love, friendly competition, and respect. Whether we wore crimson, burnt orange, or navy blue, we thrived on cheering our favorite Southeastern Conference teams in the spirit of fun and devotion. And although I cannot play football like my brother, I got on the field anyway, performing at halftime on my high school dance team. I remember dressing up before each performance in our red dance team costumes, makeup on and hair perfectly done. Before each game, our beloved principal would call us girls into her office and give us a pep talk. She encouraged us to be respectful and to represent ourselves and our school. Just like any good coach rallying a team to victory in the locker room, she always left us inspired to perform our best. Her positive attitude left an indelible mark on my life. After high school, I went to college at Nickel State. I had to start wearing a new combination of school colors, and soon I bled red and black at JL Guidry Stadium football games. After college, I met my husband, who was from New Orleans, but played linebacker for Ole Miss. We were married two years later in a little Methodist church in Metairie. We were excited to start a family of our own, and a few years later, we were blessed with our son. It wasn't but 15 months later, though, that we found out he had cerebral palsy. We knew in that very moment we had a golden opportunity to coach our son how to win at life, and we did just that. Although he has physical obstacles, he has graduated and now helps coach a state champion high school football team. His positive attitude is certainly one of his best assets and an inspiration to many, especially his younger brother, who he has supported season after season as a young quarterback and catcher. It's ironic my youngest son played quarterback where I attended college. It's a joy raising two sons and seeing them excel in anything they have set their mind to. But it was just before my second-born son's baseball season was about to begin where life threw me a curveball. I learned I had breast cancer. And with so much information being thrown to me, it seemed important to know, when will I be released so that I can go to my son's baseball game? Like any sports mom, 
I didn't see this as a season-ending injury. It simply reminded me that sometimes a losing streak occurs. For the next few months, with the help of my team, I focused on my healing and remained positive. My family and friends battled, came together, and knew our main goal was to win the fight against the big C. This journey taught me that not all seasons are winning ones, but it's the team you surround yourself with that makes you the MVP.